Welcome to everyone here this afternoon, along with those of you joining us via television, both locally as well as across the country for this historic event. Before we begin, I'd like to introduce those seated to my right, beginning with manager Brad Osmus, Mike's agent Craig Landis, Jessica and Mike Trout, Angel's owner Artie Moreno, general manager Billy Epler, and club president John Carpino. We would also like to acknowledge in the audience Angel's owner Carol Moreno, members of Mike and Jessica's family, distinguished alumni, Mike's 2019 teammates, coaching staff, clubhouse personnel, and front office staff here in support. This unprecedented contract is a statement of commitment, a commitment to the organization, a commitment to winning. This is a story of loyalty by a player to wear one uniform his entire career. And the loyalty of ownership to a fan base. We would like to start our press conference with a few words from the man responsible for making certain Mike remains an angel for his entire career. Please welcome Angel's owner, Artie Moreno. Okay. Um, I'd like to thank all the Angel fans. Thanks for coming out. Thanks for all your support. We need to give you yourselves a big hand. Uh, I would like to thank Mike and his family, um, and his in-law families here, the Cox families here, which was nice for them to come out. So. But in all the players and past players, but uh, really would like to thank my wife, uh, my better 90%, because <laughs> she hung with us while we were going through the negotiation. And, in my face and right here. You know? Everybody was sort of hanging in for the rally the last 30 or 40 days. Um, especially I'd like to thank President John Carpino and, Bill, and Billy Epler. Uh, uh, they, they spent a lot of time working. Uh, you know, we were working pretty much 24-7 on this deal and Mike and Jessica and Everybody was sort of trying to hang in there, right? I was telling uh, Brad earlier that I was sneaking out of spring training games because uh, I figured the press was trying to figure out what I was doing. <laughs> anyway, so, uh, for, you know, my job is to thank all the fans and the Angel family who are really uh, making this possible. This is an exciting time to celebrate Mike, all, his, all of his accomplishments on and off the field. Uh, we all get an opportunity to watch him and his teammate play the game we all love for many, many years to come. And so once again, uh, thank you for being fans. Thank you, Angel family, for supporting us and good luck to Mike and Jessica and the family. Take care now. Thank you. Thank you, Artie. At this time, we'd like to hear a few words from Angels General Manager Billy Epler. Today's a special day in Angels history, all right? We're extremely proud to say that we're keeping Mike Trout in an Angels uniform for the next 12 seasons. And, and like Artie said, I know this was something on, on his mind for, uh, for a while, and it was something that Artie and John uh, and I discussed a number of times over the past couple of seasons. Those thoughts ultimately led to discussions that began in late February and they culminated earlier this week with an agreement. Ultimately, we were able to keep Mike home. In the baseball sense, 
He was born an angel, and he was raised an angel, and he represents this organization better than anybody. Mike, Mike doesn't just want to be successful, all right? Mike also wants to be significant. The difference in those two things, to me, is that being successful means you accomplish something. But being significant means you help someone else accomplish something. That's what a good teammate does. And that's what a leader does. He makes the person next to him better. Our goal as an organization is to win a World Series. So accomplishing that goal, right? Accomplishing that goal takes talented players, no doubt. But it takes a strong culture defined by leadership, teamwork, and character. And there is no one better suited to advance us to that goal on all fronts than Mike Trout. There's a saying, there's a saying in sports, there's a saying that great teams, they get the right people on the bus, right? And in the summer of 2009, Mike took a seat on our bus. And with the commitment and the trust shown by Artie and Carol Moreno, the work put in by John Carpino, our entire baseball operations group, Craig Landis, Mike, and his wife, Jessica, we were able to keep Mike on our bus. Now, together, we'll keep working to achieve that goal. Thank you, Billy. Time today uh, does not allow us to list all of his significant accomplishments in Angels and Major League Baseball record books, but Mike began his career, as Billy said, in 2009, following his first round selection in the first year player draft. Since that time, what a ride it has been, and I'm sure you can all agree, he is just a special, special person. Two-time MVP recipient, Rookie of the Year honoree, seven-time All-Star, two-time All-Star MVP, six Silver Slugger Awards, Hank Aaron Award in 2014, and has finished in the top two in American League MVP voting six times, tied for most in Major League history, with a couple of Hall of Famers named Ted Williams and Mickey Mantle. All of this, ironically, by the age of 27. The numbers and records will only continue to change dramatically for this young man. And we look forward to watching each and every one of them for the next 12 seasons. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my sincere pleasure to welcome number 27, your Mike Trout. What's up, guys? Woo! Cole's got me worked up, man. Cole, the whole day. Hey, you ready for this speech? Uh, you know, I'm happy, obviously. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank uh, Artie and Carol Moreno, uh, Billy Epter, uh, John Carpino. Faith and commitment uh, to me. Um, it's been a long couple, last couple, two weeks, three weeks. Uh, you know, we got it done. Um, my wife, family. Um, Um, I love you guys. Thanks for all the support. Ooh, I'm losing it. Um, you know, you guys are great. Uh, I want to thank my agent, Craig. Um, you know, I probably talked to him more than anybody in the last, you know, three weeks. Uh, more than my wife, my family, and my friends, everything. Um, my teammates and coaches, I want to thank you guys. You guys push me hard every day. You keep me humble. You know, you let me know when I'm uh, when I'm wrong. You know, I know, you guys give me some hard time, but I appreciate everything. Uh, my coaches uh, push me to be, be the best player I can be, uh, and uh, training staff, media relations. Obviously, training staff keep me on the field. Nevla, you know, your staff's been awesome. Uh, media relations, Tim Mead, Eric K, uh, Adam, you guys have been great. Uh, and and obviously, I want to thank the fans. You guys are. Uh, You guys have been, uh, been unbelievable, and uh, just, I want to bring a championship back to Anaheim. Let's go, baby.
Thank you, Mike. Congratulations from all of us. At this time, we invite members of the media to direct their questions to the dais. Please wait for a microphone before beginning. We ask that you introduce yourself uh, prior to your question. So media members, if you have uh, questions. Dylan? Mike, over here. Uh, could you kind of take us through your thought process as far as, uh, you know, when you kind of thought, okay, this is the place I want to be long term, and obviously, there, you know, you would have had a, some other options had you hit free agency, uh, when you got to the point where you felt comfortable closing those doors? Yeah, um, I think in the last couple of years, uh, you know, bringing in Epler, um, the relationship, what I have with, the, you know, the front office, um, you know, the the things he, do in the, he does in the off season, you know, brings in players, try to put, put a... Uh, pieces of the puzzles together to make a great team. You know, obviously, a lot of talk about going back uh, east and back to Philly. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I, I enjoy I enjoy every minute being here. This is my home. You know, I, uh, I love it. Um, you know, a lot, of, a lot of things went into it. I think the direction of the, the franchise, that's that was big for me. I think if it was going the other way, I would have had to consider, you know, going. But I... You know, it never crossed my mind that I was going to be angel for life, for sure. James. J James Allen, Angels Radio, AMA 30. Chicago, huh? There you go. <laughs> uh, this is a quest question is basically for Artie Marino. Artie, can you break down to us uh, what the true meaning of this is to you, not only as the Angels owner, but as a fan in general? Is that for me? <laughs> uh, my, my wife helped me with my notes before. I don't know if I could answer any more questions. <laughs> you know, um, you know, I always, you know, day one when I came in, I wanted to make sure that uh, people can come to the ballpark with their family and enjoy a game, have a good experience, and um, we worked worked really hard to and our people make everybody feel welcome here and to you know put great players out in front of you and and really try to communicate with all the fans in the community of what we're doing and to you know when you look at some of the players that have played here and the players are they're playing now and you know beauty of it we're going to play here in a couple hours get ready to go you know trap it up here this next week and uh you know, it's just to you know, watch Mike these last few years and how he communicates with his teammate, teammates and other people and how he handles the kids and the fans and uh, with a smile and, you know, gets out there and signs. Uh, all the, the little things that are really important uh, for the fans to see. But, um, you know, we spent a lot of time talking and... Uh, you know, Mike and I had a real good one-on-one. -on -one. It was supposed to be 10 or 15 minutes. We spent an hour talking about just how important that he, he, he needed to feel good about being here. He told me that's where he wanted to be, so we tried to do our best to get him here and make he and his family happy and comfortable. Um, but, uh, you know, it's one of the, you know, we need some jewelry, I mean, you know. It's been a while, right? So, you know, I just got real happy about it. So, so there you go. Mike Ted Sobel, Sports USA. Congrats to you and your family. The word loyalty is not used very often anymore in pro sports, and I'm wondering how that comes into play for you, what the meaning of that is, and in this business transaction. And for you, Brad, uh, how does this make your life a little easier for the next whatever amount of years? I'm looking forward to bossing around a guy making 400 million bucks. That's what it is. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I mean, who wouldn't be excited or ecstatic to have a guy like Mike Child, not only from a talent perspective, but just a person perspective. Uh, he goes about his business the right way. He sets an example for the people around him, um, and he's a perennial MVP candidate. So clearly... Being able to write his name in the lineup every single day is something I look forward to doing. Uh, job, Brad. <laughs> uh, I think spending your whole career with one team, I think it's pretty cool. Uh, I think that's, uh, 
that was one thing on my mind. Um, you know, talking to people. Uh, you know, if I if I did leave in two years, you know, maybe looking back, I would I would have maybe regretted a little bit. You know, because I, I I love it here. Obviously, it's uh, it's great. The weather's great. Uh, stadium's great. Everything. You know, everything. Um, you know, comes with. You know, coming. I love coming to the ballpark. You can ask my buddies. I'm always almost the first one here every day. Um, uh, just, I just, I think being here, you know, 12 more years and being here my whole career, I think it's, uh, it means a lot to me. Taylor. Uh, Taylor Ward with Locked On Angels. This is for Billy. Billy, you've, when you came into this job, you had a lot of checklists you had to file between building the farm system, um, getting a lot of things together, even a new manager. Um, it seems that you've built the farm system. You got Shohei. You've got a new manager. Now you have Mike long term through for 10 more or 12 more years. Where does this kind of mark in your lifetime? Obviously, you have your father and a husband, but where does this kind of mark as, a, as your lifetime in general? Well, um, you know, there's things that happen professionally that you're very, very proud of. Um, you know, and a lot of the things that you, you've named, I'm, I'm proud of. Um, but you know, I've seen a lot of a, a lot of great players, um, you know, through through my 20 years. Um, but Mike really personifies not only on-field talent, um, but also impeccable character to go with it. You know, I, I use the example when um, I was talking with a with, with a, a writer. Um, during this spring training, and, and he said, you know, what have you learned about Mike that you didn't already know? Um, because I was watching him across the diamond for so many years. And I said, I think the thing that I've learned the most, and you referenced being a, being a husband and a father, um, the thing I've learned the most is that if the house next door to me opened up, I would really hope Mike and Jessica Trout move in. <laughs> That's what I've learned. They're just really quality people. So, um, you know, with that being said, you know, we're, we're in the, you know, we have a lot of boxes still to check. Um, we have a farm system that is, uh, that is going in the right direction. Um, we're going to continue to build something sustainable here, something healthy here, um, and expect to perennially be one of the top teams in baseball year in and year out. That's our standard. Uh, this question is from Mike Trout. So, uh, Mike, just to uh, echo what Taylor was asking, uh, Billy, when you see what the body of work that Billy Epler has put into this organization, um, basically restoring proper order to the farm system, adding key pieces in the rotation like Otani and also two elements this year, and where this organization is going. I mean, can you see this organization uh, being not, not a worst of first because you guys were in the last place, but just a worst of first organization and making the playoffs you know, something like the Bears did for uh, in the NFL. <laughs> That's where I'm staying. Um, you know, I think, uh, you know, in the off season, you uh, you obviously like to bring in new new players. Um, like you said, it's Billy and you know Artie and Carpino did a, did a great job bringing in new players. It's like um, the farm system. Uh, I think you guys know. A couple years ago, it was you know pretty you know deflated as people would say but uh you know billy has done a great done a great great job his scouts everybody the uh the draft and everything bringing in great players like adele marsh uh canning you know get good young arms and you know the future is bright and i uh you know I, like i said when i was making this decision with my wife it was uh definitely definitely on my mind that this, the organization was going in the right direction and going in the right direction and uh obviously billy uh wants to win uh, I think anything you do, uh, baseball, anything in regards to anything, uh, he wants to be the best, and uh, I, I like that. So, that's that. Good. All right, folks, that concludes this afternoon's press conference. We thank you for joining us. Media members wishing to conduct brief one-on-ones, uh, ask them to make their way to the Fox Sports West studio location. Thank you again, everybody, for, uh, for coming out this afternoon and enjoy tonight's game.